So thank you very much, Allentown. Thank you very much, Allentown. I know it well. Eight days, you believe that? Eight days from now, we're going to win the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and we are going to win four more great years in the White House. I want to begin today by discussing an issue of existential importance to Pennsylvania, very, very important. Last week, sleepy Joe Biden made perhaps the most shocking admission ever uttered in the history of presidential debates. In other words, he blew it. On live television, 91 to 9. Did you see that? 91. Do you know what that means? 91 to 9, but we won't talk about that in front of the fake news. Joe Biden confirmed his plan to abolish the entire U.S. oil industry. That means no fracking, no jobs, no energy for Pennsylvania families, Texas, all the other way. He wants to go wind. Let's go wind. Let's go have brownouts, blackouts all over Pennsylvania, all over the country. He wants to go wind. He wants to go with windmills that are made in Germany and China and send big, big carbon into the air when they're making them. You know that, right? From a different continent, but that's okay. Biden's plan is an economic death sentence for Pennsylvania's energy sector. I, I mean, I think you all know that. Did you see it, though? Do you believe it? And even the anchor, who I thought did a very good job, by the way, Kristen, I thought she did a very good job. She said, why do you say that? Remember that? Why are you saying that? Why do you say that? He will eradicate your energy and send Pennsylvania into a crippling depression. Somehow that doesn't sound good, Mr. Congressman, does it? Huh? The Biden energy shutdown, and he wants to shut down the whole country. And we're rounding the turn. You know, all they want to talk about is COVID. By the way, on November 4th, you won't be hearing so much about it. COVID, COVID, COVID. COVID. Today, let's talk about COVID all over Europe, right? Europe's spike, they don't talk about that. Now we're rounding the turn and we have the vaccines coming out very soon, years ahead of schedule. If he would have done it like he did the H1N1 swine flu, one of the worst handled, that was an epidemic, it was a disaster. He had no idea what the hell he was doing, but you know that. The Biden energy shutdown would inflict Deep pain and misery on Pennsylvania, mass layoffs, constant blackouts and brownouts, soaring gas prices. Nice to have that $2 gasoline, isn't it? Surging energy bills, no air conditioning in the summer, no heat during the winter, and no electricity during peak hours. Let's watch President Trump on television. I'm sorry, we won't be able to do it. The wind isn't blowing today, darling, we won't be able. No, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't power those big factories that we're opening up all over the country. Biden's running mate, Kamala Harris. Oh. Did you see her last night on television with the laugh? Ha, 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 she's like, she was laughing at a horrible question about her, and she just laughed. She found it so funny. Most liberal senator. She's the most liberal senator by far. She's more liberal than Crazy Bernie. Even sponsored the $100 trillion Green New Deal. <laughs> the Green New Deal, no, I don't think so. The Green New Deal would be an economic disaster for our nation, certainly for this state. Biden and Harris have a pledge to join and rejoin the, the Paris. Look, you know about Paris? The Paris Climate Accord. One of the great disasters of all time. Just call up France. How's Paris doing? Shipping your energy jobs to foreign polluters all over China, all over the rest of the world. And you know, it was hard bringing them back. We brought our jobs back. A lot of our jobs are coming back now. They're coming back now. You know, speaking about jobs, I want to thank the people that own this plant. You know, you have a governor named Tom Wolf, I guess. Tom Wolf. This thing was set up just a few hours ago. That's why it's so incredible. There are people across the street trying to get it. This was set up because your governor made it almost impossible for us to find any site. Normally, we would have had an airport. 
we would have gotten in, we would have had it. I mean, this is really a nice place. No, I want to thank the trucking company. They're great. They're supporters. But we just found it a little while ago because they were shut out. We had a deal. It was a deal and they broke the deal. Headed by Governor Tom Wolf, who's got your whole, who's got your whole Commonwealth shut down. Whole Commonwealth is shut down. Although probably on November 4th it'll open. They'll announce on November 4th. Did you see the one governor said, no, I think we should be open by around November 4th. Oh, thank you, Larry. Now, they think they're going to inflict harm in bad numbers. Our numbers are so good. Our comeback numbers are the best anywhere in the world. Doesn't matter. But you know what? It does inflict tremendous harm on the people that are shut out of their jobs that are going to lose their jobs with suicides and drugs and alcohol and all the problems. So Tom Wolf, uh, next time gives, give us a little notice, Governor. And I'll remember it, Tom. I'm going to remember it, Tom. <laughs> Hello, Mr. President. This is Governor Wolf. I need help. I need help. You know what? These people are bad. We, we go out of our way, regardless, Republican, Democrat, when they have a problem. But he shut us out, and he tried shutting us out of two other venues. You know, we have three of these today in Pennsylvania. Three of these. And these just came out, I, I, you know, I have to say, because I watch in the fake news, there has never been anything like what's happening now. But these just came out. So Rasmussen just came out. Trump is leading. You know, that's been one of the most accurate polls. You don't read it. In fact, the pollster called us yesterday, said, you have really good numbers, but they won't accept them. When we put them out, they don't put them out. Unless they're negative, the press doesn't put them out. Can you know? This is serious. And how about big tech? How about the Biden scandal? And they're not even covering it. They don't want to talk about it. And by the way, that's a real scandal. And the press doesn't want to write about it, except for the New York Post. The press won't write about it. And big tech won't take it. People have no idea what's going to happen in Pennsylvania. That I can tell you. I know Pennsylvania. Don't forget, I went to school in Pennsylvania. I went to school in Pennsylvania, college, and uh, I know it much better than he does. You know, he's always talking about, oh, I grew up, right? I grew up in Pennsylvania. He grew up nowhere. He didn't grow up. No, did you watch him on 60 Minutes last night? Did you see yesterday when he called me George? No, I don't know if I like George. I don't know. Not George. What a mess. What a mess. No, he called me George. I don't know if I should be insulted or happy about it. I'm sort of insulted. That's the first time that's happened to me in a long time. Now, but the polls just came out. So it just came out. So let me tell you the real polls, okay? Because we feel we're winning almost easily. But you don't hear that. I watched television today purposely to see what was going on. So it started out, CNN is the worst. But I hear the guy, I hear AT&T is finally getting smart. And they're going to fire the head of CNN. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. Zucker. But you know what? Look at this. So Rasmussen was very accurate last time, like one of the top two or three. Rasmussen, Trump approval rating. 53 and 52, 53%. So in another poll, we're leading in Nevada. That's nice. We're one up in Nevada. We're way up in Texas, despite what you keep hearing. Five up in Texas. I think we're much more than that if you listen to the governor of Texas, who's great. In Ohio, we're way up by four or five points, five points. In Florida, we have it down as four up in Florida. That's a lot for Florida. So in Florida, Rasmussen, that's a Rasmussen. Both these are all different. That's a Rasmussen, 50 to 46, we're plus four in Florida. You don't hear these numbers, right? 
you hear these guys get on television, Florida is going to be very tough. No, we're winning in Florida. We have crowds. We're winning in Florida. Uh, but you don't hear it. We're nicely up, five up in Georgia, landmark. It's called landmark. Five up in Georgia. You don't hear that. I heard today, he's losing in Georgia. No, we're not losing in Georgia. We're going to win by much more than five. In Arizona, we're nicely up, really nicely up. Very good. We're winning big in Iowa, but we should be with what I do for the farmers. Got them $28 million from China. In Montana, we're so far up, they, don't even, they shouldn't even have the election. <laughs> Likewise, in Utah, so far up, we're plus 12, plus 15. And in West Virginia, we're 20 up, 20 points up. These are just came out, they came out today. And then in a head-to-head -head with Sleepy Joe Biden on a national basis. I'm, I am really into the states, because you know you run. Remember Hillary used to complain? But I never did a national, you know, winning, I think winning the, the vote, overall vote, is almost easier than the Electoral College. But uh, you remember last year she'd complain. She used, to, she used to campaign in the wrong states. The next year, but they probably learned. But in the national poll, we're leading against Sleepy Joe Biden. We're leading. And that's a Rasmussen poll. Head to head. No, we're leading. We're leading head to head against Sleepy Joe. So I just thought I'd do that. Remember in the old days, four years ago, I used to read the polls. I'd drive them crazy. And they'd say, oh, that's not right. I turned out to be right. <laughs> you know? So I want you to hear it. I, I, it's on television now. It's the only way we get it on because they don't put it on. They're fake and they're corrupt people. They're fake. <laughs> They're corrupt. I mean, I watched, I never watched CNN, but I had to see it this morning to see. So I watched them for a little while. I watched MSDNC owned by Comcast, right? MSDNC. I watched, and you watch these polls and you say, oh, this is terrible. They're fake polls. They're fake. They're total fake. These are real polls. We're going to win in Florida. We're going to win in Pennsylvania, I think. I mean, look at this venue. You have thousands of people across the street that couldn't get in. They couldn't get in. Because, honestly, uh, Secret Service wasn't that well equipped. They didn't expect, because we just set this place up. We just set it up. And think of it. So we have a venue, and the governor that counts the ballots, right? The governor counts the ballots. And we're watching you, governor, very closely in Philadelphia. We're watching you. A lot of bad things. A lot of bad things happen there with the counting of the votes. We're watching you, Governor Wolf, very closely. We're watching you. But the same guy that makes it impossible for us to get a venue, we just got this thing literally hours ago. And to have people across the street trying to get in is amazing. I mean, it's amazing. Which tells you, and I don't know if you saw the Ohio rally, we had, we had, 35, 40,000 people. Thank you very much. Nah, that's okay. <laughs> we love you. We love you. Thank you. Now, one of them had a, a, a guest this morning. I really watched it for this reason. I mean, I had to get look. It started off COVID, COVID, COVID. Don't go. Don't go and vote. Don't go and vote. You know who's not voting? The Democrats. They're not voting. You know, if you look at some of these early polls, so we're supposed to be way down in the initial week because it's the fake ballots, right? The phony ballots that are all crooked as hell. And then we catch up. But we have states where we're leading in early voting. That's trouble because we win everything from here on in. We win everything. Just get out there and vote, or if you have an absentee, send it in. But you know what? There's nothing like getting out and voting. I did it two days ago. I went and voted. And it was so good. You know, I went in Florida, at Palm Beach. I said, okay, I'm here to vote. And the woman was fantastic. Sir, do you have identification? I said, just happen to have my passport. Sir, do you have any additional identification? I do. 
I do. She said, thank you very much. And she was good. I mean, she was doing what you have to do. She was good. She was totally good. <laughs> I hear this guy back there. So, so she did a great job. And you know what? It was a beautiful thing because there's no way you can cheat. I mean, that. Then they said, here, do this. And here, sir, you can, you know, they give you a booth. You sit down. You do what you have to do. You get up. They fold it. They put it in. Then you put it in the machine yourself. They don't want to touch it. It was so professional. There's no way you can cheat with these ballots. Who's sending them? Who's receiving them? Who's bringing them back? Who's signing them? It's ridiculous. It's the only way we can be, it's the only way we can lose, in my opinion, is massive fraud. And that's what, that's what's happening, because all over the country, you're seeing it. Thousands and thousands of ballots. How about the military ballots that were thrown into a garbage can? With the name Trump on it. So all we can say is law enforcement is watching Nevada. It's watching Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, by the way, but Philadelphia in particular, because they had a lot of strange things happen over the years in Philadelphia. And we're watching you, Philadelphia, and we're watching at the highest level. And we're watching the Democrat governor who's got his state shut down, a great state, North Carolina, he's got it shut down. We're watching North Carolina. We're watching Michigan. Oh, that's another one. We're leading by two points in Michigan, right? <laughs> Hadn't been won in decades until I won it four years ago. We're leading in Michigan, and we should be. I brought a lot of car business in, brought a lot of car plants in. They hadn't had a plant built in 42 years or something, and we brought a lot of plants in. You hear that, Chet? You hear that? That's, one, that's a brand new, beautiful F-35 jet. Stealth. That's why you can't see it. That's uh, super stealth, actually. Joe Biden is a diehard globalist who wiped out your steel mills. You know it better than almost any place in this country. Close down your factories, kill your coal jobs, outsource your industries, and support it. Every terrible and disastrous trade deal for the whole, I mean, for for 47 years, this guy's been there. You saw in the debate, did anybody watch the debate by this? But did you see? Here's my, my standard answer. Joe, you've been there for 47 years, why didn't you do it, right? And you left three and a half years ago, Joe, so it's not like it was 25 years ago. You left, why didn't you do it, Joe? You know, he's talking about, oh, I would have done this with a pandemic, and yet he had the worst. His chief of staff said that he, and himself, the chief, they were grossly incompetent. They had no idea what to do. And now they're telling us how to handle a much more lethal problem. Amazing. I wonder if that chief of staff is still around. You know, he probably said it when he assumed Joe couldn't win, right? You know, when Joe ran, because he was always 1% Joe. We used to call him 1% Joe. And then he ran, and now he's at 50%. You know where he's at 50 percent, right up there he's at 50. And he ends up winning. Tell me, is politics a strange game? He was a cheerleader for NAFTA, which was a disaster for your state, and he enthusiastically voted for China's entry into the World Trade Organization, decimating your manufacturing and enriching China. It's really what made China. He voted for it. Pennsylvania lost almost 50 percent of its manufacturing jobs after Biden's NAFTA and China disasters. And it wasn't only him, but it was the thinking. That was the thinking. That's what they want. Decade after decade, vote after vote, Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, has betrayed Pennsylvania. How the hell can you vote for him? Is this a serious? How can you vote for this guy? Congressman, how do you vote for this guy? Look, look, look. He almost got through the debate. I wouldn't say he was Winston Churchill, but it was okay. And then we got him on the last question. I said, do you mean you're against oil? Yes, I'd uh, wean it out. I said, Pennsylvania, Texas, are you watching? You have no choice, okay? If you stop fracking, if you stop fracking, which he's against, you know, remember, he'd say, I'm against fracking. I will ban fracking. He did this for over a year. 
We got We only have about a hundred clips. We're going to play some of them for you. But here's here's the thing. I don't want to play them all. We don't have enough time in the day. But you don't have to take my word for it, because you know what? Because it's Pennsylvania, I did a special television, like Cecil B. DeMille. I did a, a really special little treatment for you. The late, great Cecil B. DeMille. Here's Joe on two things, security and fracking. You gotta believe, you're not even gonna believe it. Where is your screen? The screen costs us a fortune, so I hope you enjoy it. My problem is I voted for that. I'm supporting NAFTA because I think it is a positive thing to do. And I do not pretend to be an expert on uh, international trade matters. When you ran for president and when Barack Obama ran for president, you both said you would renegotiate NAFTA. You didn't. Trade agreements like NAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China, which forced American workers to compete against people who are making pennies an hour has resulted in the loss of 160,000 jobs. The president is absolutely right when he says that China has been cheating for 25 years and that Bill Clinton didn't, didn't do enough about it, George W. Bush didn't do enough about it, Barack Obama didn't do enough how about is it. What, how exactly are you going to negotiate that? What magic wand do you have? The rise in China is an incredibly positive development for not only China, but the United States and the rest of the world. The rise in China is a positive positive development it is in our self-interest that china continue to prosper we want to see china rise china is a great nation and we should hope for the continued expansion china is not our enemy we talk about china as our competitor we should be helping the idea that china is going to eat our lunch is bizarre the idea that they are our competition, they're going to beat us, is bizarre. China is going to eat our lunch? Come on, man. They're not bad folks, folks. China's not a problem. Allowing China into the World Trade Organization, which he supported, extending most favored nation status to China, which he supported, that those steps allowed China to take advantage of the United States by using our own open trade deals against us. No, Do you think in retrospect that you were naive about China? No. Today we're finally ending the NAFTA nightmare and signing into law the brand new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. Very special. Listen, it's hard to overstate the importance of the USMCA. Uh, this is the single biggest bipartisan legislative victory for this president and this administration. It is a huge deal. Wage growth is better than it has been since 2009. That means it is better than it has been for seven out of eight of the years that Obama was president. The new USMCA has powerful protections to keep auto manufacturing jobs. Since the election, we've created 41,000 brand new motor vehicle and parts jobs. But doesn't he deserve some credit for that? It's better. The USMCA is better than NAFTA. It is better than NAFTA. I never said I oppose fracking. You said it I, on tape. I did show the tape. Put it on your website. I'll put it on. Put it on the website. Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in a Biden administration? No, we would, we would, we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated. I guarantee you. We're going to end fossil fuel. No more, no new fracking. I'd gradually move away from fracking. And I think it's critically important on day one that we end any fossil fuel leases on public lands. Uh, well, like, what about, say, stopping fracking and stopping yeah. new pipeline infrastructure yeah, yeah. and, and, exactly. and, and, and exactly. Yeah. They, they want to do the same thing I want to do. They want to phase out fossil fuels, and we're going to phase out fossil fuels. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. I have one final would question. Would you close it down falls, the oil industry? It falls, or would you close it down the oil industry? By the way, I would transition from the oil industry, yes. Oh, I would transition. That is a big In statement. terms of business, that's the biggest statement. Okay. Because we basically what he's saying is he is Mr. going President? to destroy the oil industry. Okay. Will you remember that Texas? Will you okay. remember that Pennsylvania, Oklahoma? Vice
so will you remember that Pennsylvania place? By the way, who has gone, who has voted here so far? Oh, that's good, because you know, Pennsylvania is a very late voting state, which I like, actually. For obvious reasons, I like that. So that's also, okay, who has not voted yet? Who doesn't intend to vote? Who's not going to vote? Oh, you better say that. You'd be in big trouble in this crowd. So who is going to vote for Trump? Okay. See, that's why I brought all that expensive equipment, because it's easier than me saying it, right? Huh? No, it's great. That's something brand new, just a couple of days, and we only bring it to certain locations, okay? And even though we got shut out of our main by your governor, that governor, but we brought it here. But isn't that very descriptive? Isn't that better than me telling you he said this and he said that? Yeah, there it is. He also said, by the way, he's going to cut your Social Security. You saw that yesterday, right? In 2016, Pennsylvania voted to fire this corrupt political establishment. And you elected an outsider as your president who is finally putting America first. America first. With your vote, we will continue to fight the American. Look, we're going to fight. We are going to ready. We are going to fight for the American workers, and we're going to lower drug prices, support your police. We're going to support your police. We're going to protect your Second Amendment, which is totally under siege, but don't worry about it. As long as I'm your president, you don't have to worry about your Second Amendment. Look at what I've done so far. It's been under siege, I can tell you that. We're going to defend our borders. They don't want to have borders. They want to have open borders. You know, the wall is almost complete, right? They want to have, a, and we have the strongest border we've ever had. Right now, they want to have open borders. And if you have open borders, you don't have a country. You don't have borders, you don't have a country. Almost finished, very shortly, it's going to be finished. We just hit 400 miles of wall, that's a lot. And this is a wall that's exactly what Border Patrol and all of the law enforcement people wanted. We built them, I said, you know, could you take it easy? This is getting a little expensive. Load it up, it's loaded up with equipment and wires and everything else, in addition to the wall. Because as you know, the Democrats say, walls are obsolete, right? I said, no. Walls and wheels will never be obsolete. Walls and wheels. Everything else is going to be obsolete. And sure, we want to ensure that more products are proudly stamped with the phrase, a beautiful phrase, made in the USA, right? Made in the USA. We are going to deliver record prosperity, epic job growth. We're doing it already. 11.4 million jobs over the last few months. There's never been a time in our history where we put that many people to work that quickly. Groundbreaking therapies and safe vaccines that quickly end the pandemic. It's ending anyway. We're rounding the turn. It's ending anyway. But the vaccines are going to be incredible. They'll be very quick. If somebody else were president, you'd get a vaccine in about four years from now. Normal life. That's what we want, right? Normal life. We want normal life. We just want normal life. It's happening very quickly. And next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. I gave working families record-setting tax cuts, biggest tax cut in the history of this country. And this guy's running on tax increases. I never saw it. I said it yesterday where I was with a great group. I was in New Hampshire. We should do very well there, unless you watch television. He will not win. Then you get polls like, you're leading. And I say, why do they keep saying that? Because you know what they are? They're suppression polls. They make you depressed. And by being depressed, you say, darling, we really like our president a lot, but let's just go have dinner, and then we'll come home, and we'll come home early and watch the results. And that didn't happen four years ago. You said, darling, he may not win based on television, but let's go vote anyway. And then they had, in probably the most exciting evening, maybe in the history of television, right? Sure beats any sporting contest. Even ESPN admitted that. There's never been anything like this. Then you went 
Donald Trump has won the state of Florida, right? Remember? And they said, Donald Trump has just won the state of Ohio. So, you know, with Ohio, we went, I mean, we went for a year. You have to win in Ohio. You cannot win unless you win Ohio. And they go, Donald Trump has just won the state of Ohio. But here was the problem. Won by eight points. This was not like, that was like the biggest victory. They couldn't believe it. And they said, there's something going on here, but I'm sure this is just... Remember with the hand, John King, the hand shaking. Hand started getting a little shaky. Now it got a little bit shaky, and then we won North Carolina. We won, excuse me, a place called Pennsylvania. Remember? There is no way, beginning of the evening, there is no way for Donald Trump to get to 270, right? And they were right. I got to 306. 306 to 223. 306 to 223. That was a... It was... <laughs> that was some evening. And you know what? I'll tell you what. I hate to say it, and I never thought I'd say it, because what happened there was legendary. This is a more important, this is going to be the most important election in our country's history. So get out and vote. In my second term, I will cut middle class taxes even more. We have a big tax cut. And sleepy Joe Biden has pledged the biggest tax hike in history. Did anybody see 60 Minutes last night? Did anybody see 60 Minutes? which is a total joke of a show, but you saw I released the thing early, so they got the full. But it was okay. But did you see his performance on that show? The only thing almost as bad was Kamala with the laugh. Ha ha, that's so funny, ha ha ha. She kept laughing. I said, is there something wrong with her too? She will not be the first woman president. You can't let that happen. You can't let that happen. No, I said, is there something wrong with her? She kept laughing at, at very, you know, serious questions. But how about this? Mike was great. But how about this? They asked me, she says, are you ready for tough questions? I thought she was kidding, you know, because how do you say? I said, just treat me fair. No, no, no. This is tough questions. And I said, they do. And I said, let's see what you have. And it was just... Question, question, kill. Go, always going for the kill. She's, she's a Zippo, but always going for the kill. And then did you see the interview with him? Oh, it was so soft. They're trying to protect. They try so hard. That's right. You saw the other day, he's walking out with ice cream. Huh? <laughs> Mr. Vice President, what flavor is it? Uh, It's, I think it's vanilla and chocolate. I said, I don't get questions like that, right? Now, Pennsylvania gets it. By the way, we win Pennsylvania, we win the whole thing. You gotta get out there. You gotta win. Big deal, right, Congressman? This election is a choice between a Trump super recovery. We're having a super V, it's called. Nobody even thought. We are doing numbers, and where do you see that number on GDP? I don't know what it is. The Fed said it may be a 35% increase in GDP. The Atlanta Fed, they came out last week. You saw that? I'll take 25% right now. I'll take 15 right now. I think the record was like seven or eight. But they said it could be 35%. You see car sales through to the roof. Housing starts through the roof. There's great things going on but a tax increase by Biden, all the things he wants to do, regulations, he wants to put back all the regulations, which were terrible. It would take 20 years to get a highway approved, 20 years. A job killer is right, it's a job killer. So you'd have that against a Biden depression. Let me tell you, if he gets in with what he wants to do, you will have a depression, the likes of which we've never seen in this country outside of perhaps 1929. It's a choice between a Trump boom or a Biden lockdown. He wants to lock down the country again. No, we understand the disease. Well, you guys, I don't even talk to you. You're already locked down. Are you going to ever open up? 
Congressman, are you going to get this guy, this clown, to open it up? Wolf? Make sure he can't get a sight. Make sure when the president comes into Pennsylvania, make sure he can't get a sight. He cannot get a sight. I don't want him here. We had one. They shut it down. We had two. They had three. But I like this place. This is quite intimate. My guys did a good job at about four hours' notice. They had like... No, but think of it. Think of it, though. I said it before. So he doesn't want us to have a sight. No, freedom of speech, right? Doesn't want us to have a sight. But this is the guy that's counting our ballots? Doesn't work. It doesn't work. So be very vigilant and watch. Be poll watchers. Watch. Did you see where they fought us because they didn't want poll watchers? They took us to court. And we had a bad decision. We had a judge, this judge. So we'll appeal him. But this judge, this judge, obviously, I won't, I won't get too into that. But he said, no, you can't have poll watchers. So he's saying, we can't even watch as they count the ballots. But we're going to appeal it, and we'll end up winning. We'll end up winning. Can you believe it? We can't have poll watchers, the judge said. They fought us on that. They didn't want people watching them count. Who ever heard of a thing like this? Before I came along, nobody would have sued. That's why Romney got almost zero. You know, when he, Romney in Philadelphia, remember, he got, he got almost zero votes. How do you get zero votes in a city? But we watch, and we'll sue, and we'll keep doing it, and we'll keep having law enforcement right alongside of us. If Joe Biden and his Democrat socialists are elected, they will delay the vaccine, delay therapies, prolong the pandemic, close your schools. Your schools have to open and shut down our country. This guy doesn't have a clue. This guy doesn't have a clue. Have you seen what this is? I mean, he, we can't play with the country. The only thing I can tell you for sure, President Xi from China, President Putin from Russia, Kim Jong-un, North Korea, and I could name 40 others, they're sharp as a tack. They don't want to deal with Sleepy Joe. One of them said to me, one of the leaders said, well, I hope you win, because we don't want to deal with somebody that sleeps all the time. Do you believe that? No, he just announced the lid. He announced another lid. You know, and he's not, you know, somebody could say, oh, this is brilliant, it's prevent defense. First of all, did you ever see prevent defense? It always loses. A team shuts down the other team for three and a half quarters. They're leading by six. Then they go prevent defense, they lose. All the time, right? Two touchdowns scored on them. They shut a team down for the whole game. Then they go, let's go prevent. Well, I don't know if he's doing that. I don't think so. I think he's doing it because he can't answer questions. Really. When these clowns back here, bad, corrupt people, when they ask him questions, he cannot answer the simplest question. How about where they gave him questions on a teleprompter? They said, here are the questions, and they wrote out the answers to him, and he's responding. Can you imagine I have the press here? Sir, what about this? What about that? What about... I won't tell you some of the tough ones, because there are, some, there are some questions that never work out well, no matter how you answer them. They can make whatever, you know, they'll take the answer that could be perfect, and they'll make... So they'll ask a question, and they says, let's see, oh, well, that means they gave them the questions. Who ever heard of this before? And then the way the, the tech fakers close, Section 230, anybody? They closed down because the government gave them special protection. The way they closed down anybody, they banned the New York Post from being on. Can you believe it? The New York Post, fourth largest paper. No, it's amazing. In an interview that aired last night, Biden said he opposes letting young Americans resume their lives, even though most are at extremely low risk. 99.99. Now, as an example, I had it, and here I am. But my wife had it. First Lady had it, but the legendary Baron Trump had it. They say, sir, your son Baron tested positive. I said, oh, that's terrible. Like 14 minutes later, how's Baron doing? Oh, he's better, he's fine. Because they're stronger than us. They have an immune system. I don't know what the hell it is, but how's he doing? 15 minutes, later, how's he doing? He's fine, sir, he's fine. Baron, are you feeling okay? I, nothing wrong with me, Dad.
think he had the sniffles, barely. 99.98% of those under the age 50 fully recover, but, but Sleepy Joe wants to keep the whole country locked down, keep them in their homes while letting rioters and looters run wild. You know, we call these protests, and this is not a meeting, we call them protests, you know why? Because the only thing you can do in Pennsylvania is a protest. You can't go to church, you can't pray to your God, you can't be with your pastors, your priests, your rabbis, you can't be, none of that. You can't do anything, you can't go shopping, you can't open your stores. But if you want to protest and burn the hell out of your city, no problem, you can do that. So, when I was told a couple of months ago about Pennsylvania and others, Minnesota, we're going to win too. You know, we're going to win Minnesota because we saved Minneapolis. I sent in the National Guard, took about a half an hour, but we're going to win that. But when you think about it, you can't do anything. And then they have this little clause, unless you're protesting. I said, good. So these are no longer rallies, they are friendly protests. When the China virus arrived, we moved heaven and earth to fight the disease. We banned travel from China and Europe. Sleepy Joe didn't want to. He said, oh, you shouldn't do that. You're xenophobic, right? He called me racist, too. He called me everything. That was in January. Two months later, he still thought he was right. And then he had to apologize. And then he, then he runs, and then he said, Trump should have done it earlier. Except he would not think of it. How does he get out of the bad one? And the fake news doesn't want to report that. So in January, I wanted to do it. But in March, he thought, I should have never done it. Same with Pelosi. She was dancing in the streets. Nancy Pelosi. Crazy Nancy. Crazy. She's crazy as a bed bug. How about when she went to the beauty parlor, and the woman that owned the beauty parlor is a Trump supporter. Can you believe it? Crazy Nancy. Ah, oh, what a group. We have a good chance of taking back the house, I'll tell you. We have a good chance. Because she's, because she's crazy. We airlifted medical supplies, built hospitals from scratch, slashed red tape, pioneered groundbreaking therapies. I wish Cuomo in New York would have used the convention center for seniors. You know, if Cuomo would have used the convention center for seniors and the big ship, you know, we sent the big hospital ship in, sitting there practically empty all the time. He, if he would have used the ship, and if he would have used the convention center for seniors, we would have had no, you would have had no problem there. We reduced the fatality rate 85%. Think of that. That's because of what we've come up with over the last little while. As, as I said before, here I am, right? And saved over 2 million American lives. So, when this first came, people were projecting that it could be as bad as 2.2 million, right? I think we say by shutting down, by doing what we did, by learning the disease, and now we have therapies, therapeutics, we have all of the different things, the vaccines come. I really think we saved 2 million lives. We get, they never say that. The fake news will never say that. And we will deliver 100 million doses of a safe vaccine before the end of the year. Seniors will be first in line for the vaccine because they're the most vulnerable, as you know. We learned that. We must take the virus seriously. We must keep our people safe. But we must not give in to panic and fear. They want me to say, everybody, everybody, oh, please. We don't want to do that. Oh, happy birthday, darling. Let's just... Most importantly, we're protecting the elderly and those with underlying conditions with extreme vigilance. This has been my top priority from the beginning. So we understand this horrible disease sent by China, came over by China. Remember that. Don't forget that, please. I will break through every op. Oh, do they want Sleepy Joe to win? Does China want Sleepy Joe to win? They own him. They own Sleepy Joe. Did you see his email where they want $10 million a year, a year, for introductory purposes? You know who they're going to introduce him to, Sleepy Joe? So the son never made 10 cents. All of a sudden, Biden becomes vice president, and now he's making millions of dollars a year. Unbelievable. 
And Biden had got and Biden got a lot of it. Look, he got 10%, right? It went to the big man. I don't consider him a big man, but it went to the big man, 10%. And the press doesn't want to talk about it. That's a one. But we won't rest until we eradicate this disease once and for all. It'll, I'm telling you, it's happening. We will vanquish the virus. We will overcome the pandemic. And we will emerge better, stronger, and more unified than ever. And by the way, there are people who want to get out. And there are people that feel more comfortable staying at home. That's OK. Stay. Don't feel that. Stay. It's OK. But if Biden and the Democrat Socialists are elected, they will raise your taxes to a level that you've never seen before. Quadruple. He's the only candidate in history whose primary platform is, I will raise your taxes. Can you believe this? I'm running against this. I am running against the worst candidate in the history of presidential politics. I am. I really believe that. And think of it, think of it. I'd have to be very careful the way I say this. You know why? If I say, if I lose, they go back. We have breaking news. President Trump thinks he's going to lose. They did it once before. You know, I told the same little anecdote. And they go back and they'll say, President Trump thinks he's going to lose. Just have to be very careful. But can you imagine, can you even imagine losing to a guy like this? Actually, I wish he was a good and even a great candidate. Because if something happened, you feel a little better. But, but could you imagine? He can't remember my name. Now, I, I'm not that big of an ego guy. He should be here, but you know, I'm the candidate, like, that's a good candidate, and I happen to be president. He could not remember my name yesterday. This is what you're putting in office. I don't think he's going to make it. I don't think he's going to make it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President Biden, We'll be doing a lid today. No, I hear he's doing the lid till Thursday. Hey, media, is it till Thursday he's doing the lid? Thursday. In other words, he's taken 40% of his campaign. He's going to lid. I don't know. I don't know. Look, you know what? You could run. See this beautiful, whatever the hell it's made out of plastic, right? See this beautiful thing? You could run that. You got the Democrats. You got the fake news media as their partner. And you have big tech. They're all partners. And then you have the rhinos. You have the rhinos. You have the bad Republicans. You have the sicko rhinos, right? That I've beaten so badly over the years. You know the rhinos, the people that do the ads and stuff? Every one of those guys just about I've beaten because they all represented a client in the primaries. And instead of saying, hey, he did a good job. He's a smart guy. He did a great job. They said, let's go against him. But every one of those guys, take a look, real garbage, not smart people. But he wants to terminate religious liberty, destroy the suburbs. He'll destroy it. I am saving the suburbs. I'm getting rid of a regulation. I'm getting rid of a regulation that will move a project next to your beautiful house. Congratulations. Do you like having a nice project next to your house? I don't think so. And with it comes plenty of crime. That's why they keep saying, we don't know. We think he's not doing well with suburban women. I think I'm doing great with suburban women. I am saving the suburbs. I'm saving the suburbs. How can I do badly? Look, here's what I know about suburban women. First of all, they're great. They love our country. But here's what I know. They want two things. They want to leave their house alone. They don't want a five-story project next to them, or could be higher. They want to leave their house alone, very important. And you know what else? They want security, OK? They don't want to have Antifa and anarchists running through this race, OK? So if they agree with what I just said, I have a feeling they're going to be voting for Trump. It was the same time last time. Remember, they said, he will not get the women's vote. He will not get the women's vote. And then at the end of the evening, you remember how great I did? Right? One of my best group, women. So I said, am I that bad? Am I that bad? He will not receive the women's vote. You know, Jim, this should be over very quickly. Uh, Donald Trump at that time, it was just Donald, no president. Donald Trump will not be able to get the women's vote. At the end of the evening, they said, man, did he do well with the women's vote. What the hell happened? Right? <laughs>
so true. And then Biden's going to pack the Supreme Court with radical justices who will shred your Second Amendment and pro-life and so many other things. He will shred it to defend our God-given freedoms. How do you like Amy, by the way? Isn't Amy great? I nominated Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court of the United States. And tonight, she will be confirmed by the Senate and become the newest member of the Supreme Court. It's a big deal. He wants to pack the court, maybe 16, maybe 18, maybe 20. Why don't you put a couple of hundred people in there? He wants to pack up the court with radical left judges. And I've been saying, I'd go a step further. I have a list, 45 great people, great people. They believe in a thing called the Constitution, you know, little things like that. He's got to tell us who he might put on, because you can't vote for him unless you know because you can't have radical left judges who are looking to destroy our country. This election day, the people of Pennsylvania must stop the anti-American radicals delivering Joe Biden in the far left. You have to do this, a thundering defeat. You have to deliver them a thundering, beautiful, big, solid defeat. You better get out there and vote. You know, when I saw the few hands of the people that voted, that's in Pennsylvania, for some reason, you always vote very late. I guess you're like me. You feel like voting in a booth, pressing a little button, right? Having somebody check to see that it really is you. There's, there is something nice about it, right? But no, but Pennsylvania, I think more than any other place, they want to vote late. So I'm, I'm really happy to see this because you know what? A lot's been learned in the last few days. The debate learned a lot. We learned a lot about fracking, about energy, about the fact that he's not all there. No, we, that debate was important. It had a lot like Super Bowl-type ratings, right? I'm glad they didn't tell me that before I went on stage. But that debate was great, and we learned. Other things we learned, when this Savannah Guthrie, who is just her. No, she was, she was coming out of her chair as she was asking me. She was, she was, she was crazed. She was crazed. And I did a nice job. Savannah, take it easy. Just relax. Just relax. Don't let the hatred show. But we learned a lot. You learned a lot, and I'm glad you're getting ready to vote. And we've got to blow them out. This is the whole ball game. We've got to blow them out. And maybe, above all else, Joe Biden, as you know, is a corrupt politician. They've known that for a long time. Now, they'll never put that on air. They will say, cut the cameras. He called Joe Biden corrupt. Cut, cut, cut. We have to protect Joe. You know, they have big benefits with Joe. If Joe gets in, they get a lot of benefits that they won't get with me. He wants to destroy your energy jobs in Pennsylvania while his own son collected $183 a month. $183,000 a month. So Hunter has no energy experience. He has no job. He has no income. His father becomes vice president, and here's just a few of the things he gets. $183,000 a month. Would anybody like that job? For a very bad type reputation, big energy company from Ukraine, right? He gets three and a half million dollars from Russia from the wife of the mayor of Moscow. Three and a half million dollars. What the hell did he do for that? He had no income, no job, no nothing. And then come the beauties. He got 1.5 billion to manage because he's a great manager of money. He had no job, no money, no nothing. 1.5 billion dollars to manage, which is millions and millions of dollars from China. I said to a friend of mine, the biggest on Wall Street, very smart guy, I said, is that possible to get that? He said, it's not possible for my firm to get it. He got one and took him approximately 10 minutes in dealing with the Chinese. And then they were going for the big one, $10 million a year for introductory purposes. And when I say it, they go, but you have no proof. No, we do. We have stuff all over. But then they have a new excuse, a new excuse, Russia. It was Russia. Right, here we go again. Three years did it. Adam Schiff, the watermelon head, right? 
upon information and belief. I believe that the laptop from hell was created by Russia. Uh, I tell you, boy, some of these foreign countries, they must think, they must think, shifty shift, they must think we are nuts. Think of it. After going through all that, no collusion. They spent $48 million, no collusion, by people that hated me. If they had a stamp that had an R on it, they would have said, it's collusion. Smart people, 18 crazy Democrats that were smart, vicious, violent, no collusion. 48 million they spent. And now we hear about the laptop, the laptop from hell that he brought in to be fixed. He forgot that, that was a very expensive, that was a very expensive repair job. He didn't pick it up. By the time he picked it up, it was too late. But here's the thing, and they say it's Russia, Russia, Russia. I hope ever, does anybody here believe it was Russia? You know who doesn't believe it even more than you is the fake news media, but they'll write it all the time. It's a con job. It was the greatest crime in the history of our country. And this could be the second. We caught them spying on my campaign. It was a treasonous act, and we caught them. We have them. Let's see what happens. You know, we have very nice people. We have very nice people. They don't want to do anything before the election. Very nice. Very nice people. It's okay to do it to me, but it's not okay to do it to other people. If Biden wins, China wins, and if China has anything to do with this whole deal, if he wins, let me tell you, China will own the United States of America. They will own it. When we win, you win, Pennsylvania wins, and America wins. We're going to have a big victory. I don't think China likes me too much. You know, I've charged them tens of billions of dollars, billions and billions of dollars in, in uh, taxes and in all sorts of things, tariffs. And I gave $28 billion to the farmers. There aren't a lot of farmers here, I guess, right? Are you a farmer? Did you get a check? He's a farmer. I got one farmer here. But no, but I gave it to the farmers because they were targeted by China. $28 billion, two years, 12 and 16. $28 billion I gave to our farmers because they were targeted. Nobody else would do that. What you would like is I charged a big tax on the dumped steel, right? They were dumping steel all over the place, destroying your steel companies. I put a 25% tariff on that, and your steel companies started doing well again. It was very nice. Sleepy Joe won't do that. In fact, Sleepy Joe said, you know, we made a very good deal with China. Unfortunately, the ink wasn't dry before the plague came in. But I never took the tariffs off. Nobody understands that. Never took it off. I wouldn't take those tariffs off. Sleepy Joe said, one of the first things I do is take the tariffs off. Oh, do you think China would like to see him get in? Boy, oh boy. They, uh, they would love to see it. If I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician. If I don't always play by the rules of the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you harder than anyone ever before. So we have a couple of warriors here. They're great people. They're congressmen. And man, did they fight for me. Congressman Dan Muser. Dan, thank you very much, Dan. A former congressman, I'm sure you never heard of him. His name is Lou Barletta. And Lou Barletta is strongly against taking the statues of Christopher Columbus down. Right? Would you say that's right? Lou's not a big fan of that, right? And congressional candidate who is supposed to be fantastic and a star, Lisa Scheller. Good. Good. That's great, Lisa. And somebody who's done a fantastic job, campaign chair, Bernie Comfort. Bernie. Bernie. Hey, Bernie, how are we doing? Looks good. Looks good. Looks very good. Harder to judge because, you know, you go in so late, but it's looking good. The places where they're casting and where they're casting their vote, that's not any more polling, you sort of know. They, they are really looking good. Bernie, you got to win. You don't win, I'll fire you so fast, you have no idea. <laughs> 
I especially want to recognize the incredible truckers for Trump who are here tonight. Truckers. The truckers for Trump, they're incredible people, actually. I don't know how they do it. Those are long hours driving down those highways, huh? That's long. That's not easy. And we got him some pretty good legislation that other people wouldn't get him because they just don't do those things. But we got him some pretty good legislation. So thank you very much, fellas. We appreciate it. And the women and the men. Under my leadership, we achieved the most secure border in United States history. My opponent's insane immigration plan would eliminate U.S. borders entirely by implementing nationwide catch and release. They want to have catch and release. You know what catch and release is? You catch them. They're a murderer, they're a rapist, and you release them. You know where you release them? Into our country. Then Biden, at the debate, he said, no, no, it's okay, because they come back from court. Nobody comes back. They don't come back. They don't know. I ended catch and release. I didn't like catching a murderer and releasing them. No, that wasn't. We keep them out. We're keeping them out. You can come into our country, but you have to come in legally and you have to come in through merit. His plan would also make every community into a sanctuary city for violent criminals. Somebody like your governor, Tom Wolf, would probably love it. You got to speak to him about this. You can't do this kind of stuff. Call freedom of speech, right? The Biden-Harris plan would also increase refugees coming into our country by more than 700 percent. It would be the highest level anywhere in the world. That's, that's Bernie. That's crazy Bernie. They pledge to terminate all national security travel bans, opening the floodgates to radical Islamic terrorism. No, thank you. If you don't mind, Joe, no, thank you. You saw what happened uh, a few days ago in Paris, right? You saw that horrible attack. I'm keeping the terrorists, jihadists, and violent extremists the hell out of our country. Is that okay? Do the truckers agree? Do the truckers agree? I think so. I think that I think I have the truckers vote. That's nice truck. By the way, nice trucks. You think I could hop into one of them and drive it away? I'd love to do it. Just drive the hell out of here. Just get the hell out of this. I had such a good life. My life was great. And then I said, let's do this, darling. This will be a lot of fun. But you know what? I'm so happy with it because nobody has ever done so much in the first three and a half years. No administration. We invested 2.5 trillion with a T, trillion dollars. See, now Biden would say 2.5 million, 2.5 thousand. Thank you. And I love you too. Thank you. I guess why, I guess that's why we're all doing it together, right? When you get right down to it. We have a great country. We have to save our country. Most important election. But we invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military, and we saved a thing called the Philadelphia Shipyard. Have you ever heard of it? We saved it. Anybody work there? We saved the Philadelphia Shipyard. We didn't want to lose it. We also passed VA choice and VA accountability. Nobody said it was possible for the vets. And we just got a 91% approval rating from the vets, the highest ever. Remember, all for years, you'd always see vet stories, how badly they were treated. Now you go see a doctor, we pay the bill, if you can't, because we have great doctors there, actually. But a lot of times, it would take weeks before you could see a doctor. And now you go to a private doctor, we pay the bill. Nobody thought we could do that. Exactly one year ago today, we killed the leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. And we took out the world's number one terrorist. Salabani is dead. And we took 100% of the ISIS caliphate. You know that, 100%. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal, one of the worst, stupidest deals. This was John Kerry, who liked to go bicycle riding, remember? 
That's the only thing that stopped him from finishing the deal sooner. So they paid $150 billion, $1.8 billion in green, in cash, for nothing. For an agreement that expires very shortly if we didn't terminate it. You know, time flies, right? For a short-term agreement, they gave him $150 billion. The first call I get when we win will be from the head of Iran. Let's make a deal. Their economy is crashing. It's crashing. They will call, and I want them to do well, but they cannot have a nuclear weapon if it's okay with you. If it's okay with you, they cannot have a nuclear weapon. Do we agree with that, Congressman? But we want them to do well. But it'll be the first call. I said, we don't want to negotiate. They got to see what happens, because they dream also. China dreams. Every country's dreaming about it. Germany. You know, there was a poll that Barack Hussein Obama is more popular in Germany than I am. But I agree with that. If I win those polls, then I'm not doing my job, right? You know, when you think about it. No, they rip us. Everybody rips us. I recognize the true capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. That was promised for decades and decades by every single president running for office promised that, and nobody did it but me. Instead of then, right? I mean, I'm the only one. Instead of never-ending wars, we are forging peace in the Middle East. Three countries, and they're lined up. They're lined up. So beautiful to see. No blood in the sand. Much less expensive. No, we just got yesterday Sudan, you saw that. Got Bahrain, UAE. No, great. They're lined up. They're all set. You know what? They're tired. They're tired of fighting all the time. Fight. They're tired. We're bringing our soldiers back from Afghanistan, all coming back. Many have already come back. A vote for Republicans, 19 years is enough. Do you agree? 19. A vote for Republicans is a vote for safe communities, great jobs, and the American dream. It's a vote for the American dream. And in conclusion, I hate to leave you, but in conclusion, over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end our reliance on China once and for all. It's already happening. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. Second Amendment. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might. We've never had, I said, 2.5 trillion. We have the greatest tanks and rockets and missiles and jets, F-35, super stealth, and tankers and submarines, and our nuclear weapons are now tippy-top. And hope to God you never have to use them. But we are the envy of the world. We are the envy of the world. Russia, China, North Korea, no matter where you go, our weapons are the envy of the world. Hope to God we never have to use it. But we will ensure peace through strength. We will maintain American energy independence. We're independent. Can you believe that? We have energy independence, first time. We will end surprise medical billing, require price transparency, already signed, ready to go January 1st, lower drug prices even more, we have favored nations. We get the lowest in the world. Now, we're the highest. We go down to the lowest. The drug companies don't exactly love me too much. Big Pharma. They are doing more commercials than me than Biden times five. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, in God we trust, in God we trust. You know, they wanted to take the word God out of their Pledge of Allegiance. You saw that.
And I watched, and I said, oh, they must have made a typo. Uh, they didn't have in God. They didn't have God. They took the word God out. I said, must. And then when I watched it a second time, same thing happened. I said, this is serious. And then our country got very angry, and it was incredible how quickly God got put back into, right? Got put back. Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for Pennsylvania. You know, a man named Byron York, he's a great writer. I find him to be a great writer. They know him very well. He did an article today. They were saying, who's going to win? He said, I don't know. But you have these incredible rallies, and I'm not just talking about Trump rallies, that just form car rallies, boat rallies, or they just form without, by the way, trucker rallies, they have trucker rallies. And it was very interesting, he said, and it's true, and they're organic, they just happen. They had a big one, they had a big one yesterday on Long Island, they had a big one in New York City, and he said, it's very interesting, you had a big one here, yeah? No, he said, uh, yeah, I don't know. He said, he said, you better be careful. You better be careful, because he's never seen anything like it. And I'm not even talking about the rallies that we do. I'm talking about these are rallies in Iowa. They had thousands of tractors. They had tractors. The boat rallies are incredible. For the last four years, you have seen me fight for you, and now I am relying on you to deliver another historic victory for our country. On November 3rd, we must finish the job and drain the swamp once and for all. We did it. But nobody told me the swamp was that deep and that dirty and that vicious. You get impeached for a perfect phone call. They impeach you for a perfect, perfect phone call. And by the way, they had the laptop, as I call it, the laptop from hell. And based on that laptop, they should have never impeached, right? But they didn't want to reveal a little thing like that. No, it was great. And we had great loyalty from the Republican Party. Great, great loyalty. It was really great. Get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, and get your co-workers, and get the hell out to vote, please. You know what? It's going to be all over the country, not just in Pennsylvania. Well, it's going to be a great red wave. They're already talking about it. Boom. And it's going to be a lot bigger than people understand. And that's what Byron was talking about. He said, you know, I don't know. There's never been, there's never been anything. There have never been rallies like this. There have never, we were in Ohio. We were in Wisconsin. Yesterday, we were in uh, uh, New Hampshire. It was, I'm telling you, you had to see the biggest rallies anyone's ever seen. And they go quickly. You know, we give like 24 hours notice, press a button. We're going to be, we're going to be in New Hampshire. We're going to be in Ohio, Wisconsin. We're going to be someplace and boom, you have tens of thousands of people. There's never been that before. You know, Sleepy Joe goes out, there's like four people show. They have no people. They can't even fill up the circles. You know the circles? And Barack Hussein Obama went out over the last three, four days. He's drawing flies, flies. No, nobody's going. Obama's out, and they will never show it. You know, they, they don't turn. See, here, they never show the extent of it. They have the opposite. They never show it. They should show it, because nobody is showing up to watch Barack Hussein Obama. See the red lights? See those red lights, all those red lights? That means you're on live. Are you ready? Oh, they just turned them off because I was insulting. Look, they just went off. Can you believe it? You know they're tormented, the fake news. They're tormented. In one way, in one way they have to have it on because it's ratings, it's big, big, beautiful ratings. In another way, CNN hates when I say CNN is fake, corrupt news. They hate it. So you'll see it go on and off a little bit. No, they just went off. Did you see that? Boom. Anytime I start talking, they sort of say, no, let's go to a commercial break now, please. 
No, they're tormented because they want the ratings. Without it, they get terrible ratings. They want the ratings. They're fantastic ratings. But at the same time, they don't want to be talked about in a bad manner, right? But you have to talk about them because they're corrupt. They have to report the news. They are the enemy of the people. They really are. They're the enemy of the people. For generations, America's destiny was made and forged and won in places like Bethlehem and Bristol, Scranton. And by the way, he has nothing to do with Scranton. Altoona, Easton, and Allentown. They were tough American men and strong American women who gave their heart, sweat, and soul for their families, their country, and for freedom. We stand on the shoulders of the Pennsylvania patriots who fought the battles, mined the coal, worked the assembly lines, loaded the rail cars, poured the steel that built the middle class. It built the middle class. Raised up our great skyscrapers, laid down the battleships, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world, and the best is yet to come. Right? Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Pennsylvania, we have made America powerful again, our military, our military. We have made America wealthy again, our stock market. Your 401ks, let's keep them up there. Don't throw them away in two years and you'll say, huh, the president told, the previous president told me that was going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. Your 401ks are hitting records. Does anybody have a 401k? We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again, and we will make America great again. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Go and vote.